we're gonna cover some tips and hacks that will make your RV life a little bit easier and hopefully we'll be able to save you a little bit of money because honestly the price of gas right now Hey everyone, I'm Ross with RV Tips and Travels. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right into the video. Links to all the products in this video will be down in the video description below. Let's start with some basics when leaving your rig during the day. Turn off your water supply if you're using your pressurized city water connection. And if you're using your fresh water tank, you should turn off the water pump. Should you spring a leak in your RV while you're gone, both of these could save you a lot of damage. Awnings don't hold up well in high wind situations, so close your awning. And finally, if your rig isn't using propane for anything while you're gone, it doesn't hurt to close the propane tank valves. It's pretty common for cabinets to open while you're driving in an RV, and a lot of people are using these bungee cords to keep their cabinets closed. But if you don't already have these bungees, they're gonna cost you 10 bucks or more. You probably have pipe cleaners laying around the house. Put your pipe cleaner in between your handles, twist it closed, and you're good to go. And a pack of pipe cleaners like this is only gonna cost you about a dollar. So you might have seen this hack before, but it's a little tip to test out your marker lights on your RV without connecting it to a truck. By simply putting a fuse in the battery positive and the marker lights positive pins of the trailer plug, it will jump battery power over to your running lights. Now most of us have a 7 pin SAE standard plug, but there are other plugs with different pin locations too. So make sure you're connecting the positive power pin to the running lights positive pin depending on which plug you have. They are usually on the top of the connector for most of us, and make sure you use the same fuse rating that your RV running lights are rated for. In most cases, that will be a 15 amp fuse. Okay, so here's a little trick that may save you a little bit of grief, and you might look at it and say, this is never going to happen, but it actually happened to me, so I wanna go over it with you guys real quick. So if you have one of these loops that you screw closed for your safety brake, you want to make sure that when you tighten this, that you spin it so it tightens down, not up. One time I was driving, it was this way. I was on a bumpy road. It vibrated just enough to where it came down and this cable could have come out. Now it didn't come out. I caught it before it did. If you screw it down, it's less likely to work its way up than it is down. Okay, on your propane tank cover, you have this lid that opens to access the propane tank valves. We've got these wonky latches that are just horrible. It's such a bad latching design. The hinges are just plastic and designed so you can remove the lid if you want. If you haven't already, flip your entire tank cover around so the hinges are on the front and you don't have to worry about these awful latches loosening up and the lid flipping up and potentially falling off while you're driving. RV screen doors are probably one of the cheapest, flimsiest parts of an RV. These plastic latches wear over time and it doesn't take much pressure to open the door. So if you have small children or pets you don't want busting the door open, you can just close your grab handle and you can do this from the inside or the outside of the RV. Okay, a five gallon bucket can come in handy in a hundred different situations on the road. But when you're parked, you can also use it to keep your tongue jack out of the rain and your chains off the ground. It's cheaper than a tongue jack cover and it's a great multi-purpose resource to keep on hand. Okay, so if you repurpose grocery bags for small garbage can liners, you know that when you put these in here, sometimes you throw garbage in and the bag falls into the can. So what you can do is get command hooks, stick the command hooks on the side of the garbage can, and then just loop the bag around the hooks and the bag won't fall into the can. Your water heater usually has two power options. One is gas and one is electric. The electric heating element inside that heats your water will burn out in a matter of minutes or even seconds in some cases if there's no water in the tank. So something I do every single time before turning on the electric side of the water heater is burp the pressure relief valve to confirm there's water in the water heater. Always check to make sure there's water in your water heater before turning on the electric side. All of our new towels are stored here in this storage area, but a little hack I use to store slightly used towels is to hang them in the shower out of the way by adding these command hooks in the skylight. I also added hooks above the doorway for towels when I'm in the shower. This is also a great spot for towel hooks if you have a sliding door that you cannot install hooks on. So you know how there's certain things you never forget or never trust again. In part for me, it was because I had a tongue jack a few years ago that was recalled because it was activating on its own. 
So that's burned into my brain even though I installed a new tongue jack. Carefully place your old tongue jack to the side. I also don't like the idea of someone being able to extend or retract my tongue jack at any point in time. So every time I park at a campground, I just simply remove the fuse for the tongue jack. It's a weird little tick that I have, but I thought I would at least share that with you guys. This next one is not so much of a tip as it is just a suggestion. So years ago, I used these leveling blocks to level my camper. I've recently switched to the CarmTech leveling ramps to level my trailer. I'll put a link to that video down below if you want to watch that one later. I still, however, had these leveling blocks, so I found these inserts to completely flatten out the top. Putting blocks underneath your stabilizer jacks decreases the amount they have to open, which also increases their effectiveness. And with these inserts, you get more surface contact with the stabilizer pad. Plus, two sets of these blocks is much lighter and easier to store than the same amount of wood. So I don't use these anymore to level my trailer after going to the CarmTech leveling ramps, but these still make great blocks to use underneath your stabilizer jacks. If you have one of these spring-loaded shower doors, put this on your checklist. You always wanna make sure this door is completely open on travel days. The latch on this door is not very strong and the abuse that the RV takes while driving down the road could potentially open this door, slam it back and damage the assembly. Okay, this is an old school tip, but it still works today. Grab your dryer lint and pack it into a used paper towel roll. Rip off a small piece, light it, and put it at the bottom of your fire pit. And you know all that junk mail you get? It makes great kindling. Some people coat these in wax to burn longer, but you don't have to do that as it still burns slow enough to grow the fire. Dumping our fresh water and waste tanks before leaving a campground saves on weight and improves gas mileage. But those processes are not draining your water heater or the plumbing lines inside your RV. Even with a smaller water heater of six gallons, that's almost 50 pounds, plus the weight of the water still in the plumbing lines that you don't need to haul to the next campground. So we replaced our low point drain plugs with valves to easily dump that water before heading out. This also means you're replacing potentially stagnant water depending on how long it is until your next trip with fresh water. Velcro straps, great for extension cords and device chargers, but you can also use these to secure items to your RV pass-through storage roof to utilize the vertical space better. So if you're someone who likes to sleep with white noise in the background, or like me, an air purifier, here's a little tip so you don't have to bring extra equipment or download more apps on your phone. Before you go to bed, just tune your radio to a station that doesn't get reception, adjust your volume, and you have a free white noise machine that doesn't take up any extra space. Guys, I have like a hundred of these tips, so I think I'm gonna save a few for the next video. But if you learned something from this video, please hit that like button and we hope you consider subscribing. That's all I got for today. Until next time, see you guys soon.